Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. So in this video, we'll discuss about immune system. So the overview of what it is. So there's a lot of historical perspective related to immunology. So I'll let's just discuss about that. So the discipline of immunology grew out of the observation that individuals who had recovered from certain infectious diseases were thereafter protected from disease. The Latin term immunis means except which is the source of the English word immunity, meaning the state of protection from the infectious disease. Also, perhaps the earliest written reference to the phenomenon of uh, immunity can be traced back to uh, Thucydides, the great historian of the Peloponnesian War. Also, there is a lot of history that has happened with immunology that led to the development of what is the immune system. So, there was an incident uh, in Athens in four. 30 BC that only those who had recovered from plague could nurse the sick but they could not contract the disease second time. So it was discovered then that uh, there was a huge arouse of a disease named plague. So the ones who were infected with plague can be used or those who had recovered from the disease plague could help the sick ones or could help the infected ones because they won't catch the disease the second time or again or the second time they won't be infected. So moving on with this perspective. So the second, so the first recorded attempts to induce immunity delivery were performed by the Chinese and Turks in the 15th century. Also various reports suggest that dry crust developed from smallpox postules were either inhaled in the, into the nostrils or inserted into the small cuts in the skin. So this is a technique known as variolation. So this was uh, something that was uh, done way back uh, to just understand the mechanics of the body, how it works, how it responds. All right. So there was a guy named Edward Jenner in, 19, in 1798, which, in, which who was intrigued by the fact that milkmaids who had contracted the mild disease, cowpox, were subsequently immune to smallpox, so which is a disfiguring and often fatal disease. Also, Jenner reasoned that Introducing fluids from cowpox postules into people might protect them from smallpox. So you, so he used the technique of uh, saving the smallpox disease or preventing the smallpox disease by injecting the cowpox vaccines or cowpox viruses. All right. So the ones who were uh, infected with cowpox, he uh, he labeled them as. Uh, the ones who were infected with cowpox won't be infected by smallpox. So, so he used the cowpox vaccine or the cowpox virus for protection of smallpox disease. So both the two diseases were different altogether, but he used this phenomenon he, and to some extent he was successful as well. Also to this idea, so he inoculated an eight year old boy with fluid from cowpox positive and later intentionally infected this child with the smallpox. As preceded, the child did not develop smallpox. So somehow he was successful in his theory. So moving on. So the next major advance in immunology, the induction of immunity to cholera. So Louis Boyce, a pasteur, was the man who had succeeded in growing the bacterium through a uh, thought to cause foul cholera in culture and then had shown the chickens injected with cultured bacterium developed cholera. So he grew that uh, bacterium in a culture of cholera disease or cholera virus and thus injected them, uh, injected the chickens with those particular bacterium. So after returning from summer vacation, he injected some chickens with an old culture. So the chickens became ill, but with pasture surprise, they recovered. So they did not die, but to, but they were, so, uh, but when the vaccine was injected or the Bacterium was injected to chickens. Uh, they were ill, but they eventually recovered. Also, pasture then grew a fresh culture of the bacterium with the intention of injecting it into some fresh chickens. But as the story goes, he's, uh, his chicken supply was limited and therefore he used this previous injected chicken. So there was a drawback in this case. So he, does not, uh, he did not have sufficient amount of uh, uh, volunteers or chickens in this case to carry out his methods. So akin to his surprise, the chickens were completely protected from the disease. So Pasteur hereby hypothesized that uh, and proved that aging had weakened the virulence of the pathogen and that 
such an attenuated strain might be administered to protect, protect against the disease. Also, he called this attenuated strain a vaccine uh, in order of the in honor of the Jenner's work with cowpox and inoculation. So Jenner was the guy I just discovered, uh, just talked about. Edward Jenner was the guy who injected the cowpox virus to the smallpox, yeah, smallpox infected people. So with that, uh, uh, with that in mind, so Pasteur, Pasteur, what he did, he used that attenuated strain as a vaccine, which could be injected to people who are infected with certain disease to prevent that. All right, so Pasteur extended this findings to other diseases and demonstrated that it was possible to attenuate or weaken a pathogen and administer the attenuated strain as a vaccine. So this can be used as a vaccine according to Pasteur. So talking about the last part of the historical perspective. So in now classic experiment at Pudeley Fort in 1881, so Pasteur first vaccinated one group of sheep with heat attenuated anthrax bacillus and then he challenged the uh, challenged the US uh, vaccinated sheep sheeps and some unvaccinated sheep with the virulent culture of bacillus. All right, so all the vaccinated sheep lived and all the unvaccinated animals died. So this was the point where he also gained a lot of success in understanding the fact that uh, this could work as a vaccine. So the, all the vaccine, also all the sheep who were previously injected with heat attenuated or uh, anthrax bacillus were saved after when a virulent culture of bacillus was injected to them. So the, all the vaccinated sheep lived, whereas the unvaccinated sheep who were not injected with the heat attenuated anthrax bacillus died. So these were the experiment which marked the beginning of the discipline of immunology. So hereby, which is a big breakthrough on the on part of immunology. So in 1885, Pasteur administered his first vaccine to a human, which was a young boy who had been bitten rap repeatedly by a, rap a rabid dog. So it was dog. So the boy, so the Joseph Mister was the name, was inoculated with a series of attenuated rabies virus preparation. So he lived and later became a custodian at the Pasteur Institute. So this particular Pasture, so this particular guy known as Pasture uh, used this vaccine or used this particular virus strain on a human being. So that was a big, uh, big thing. So all of these uh, before this, everything was tried on animals. So nothing was proven on humans if that would work or not. So this was the first time when he tried on a human and that and he pretty much gained that particular achievement that that uh, particular strain worked on a boy. So when he was bitten by a dog, so the pastor now uh, inoculated that strain or inoculated that uh, dog's virus, which we known as the rabies virus. And then however, he injected uh, injected the, the particular virus to the boy and he lived, that's why he lived. So there was a big successful step on this part. So let's just keep this video till here. I'll be discussing more about immunology from here on the main parts of what it contains. This was a historical overview of what led to immunology and understanding of the entire human body. So hope you like this video and if you like this video, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and share this video with your friends and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Thank you.